The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Who made this beat? You gonna say the name? You gotta give them their problems. You know who made it? Pull up the email. Let's see. Hollywood Classic. Yeah. Are Hollywood we on? Hollywood Classic. All right. Shit, bump that beat. We just stepped our beat game up. <laughs> <laughs> this beat is made by Hollywood Classic. I wish y'all motherfuckers say this ain't good. We gonna make a song to it. I don't want to be your man, but I want to fuck. I don't want to be your man, but I want to fuck. I don't want to be your man, but I want to fuck. Papers come in the mail, then, bitch, I'm a duck. <laughs> I don't want to be your man, but I want to fuck. Keep the, hey, keep the music coming. Oh, what up, 5150 motherfucking nation? Uh. Let me tell y'all motherfucking something. <laughs> y'all niggas crazy in Miami on the beach. Uh-oh. Nigga, look, let me tell y'all something. Everybody was talking shit about the beach uh-huh. being hood than a motherfucker. Because the beach was hood as hell. It's Memorial Day weekend. Uh-huh. That's when all the young wild motherfuckers be out there. Motherfuckers be smoking weed, all that shit on the beach. But I did a show at this little theater by the downtown Hyatt. And the Fruit Booty Boys had took over that hotel. Oh, no. I was so glad I was on the beach. I'd rather be around the danger <laughs> than them motherfuckers walking around in swimming trunks holding hands. It was crazy. Wow. Anybody who was down there at the show in Miami who saw that, it was, they, you know what they do? Some hotels have some type of thing that lets you know it's gay friendly. And the Marriott and the Hyatt obviously have gay friendly thing going on where they invite that gay population to come out and them motherfuckers was mob deep in the hotel <laughs> walking around that motherfucker and they they was in, they was as flamboyant as they wanted you to see what they own. It wow. was most it was the most fucked up display. <laughs> the, the world is over. It's over. Hey man, these motherfuckers is fucking bitches too. So they gonna have little moist ass kids, motherfuckers take the every time you take the bottle out the mouth they cry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> put bigger bottles in their mouth. The baby's going to I want oh. a big nipple in my mouth. They're going to come out with big bottle tops for gay babies. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> how many people would you estimate? Gay baby practice bottle with the big... <laughs> The big piece of rubber up there. For- <laughs> we got an inner tube. Right. <laughs> it don't look like a. <laughs> look how Bobby wow. looks. Hey, man, Bobby, this is what's going on, man. This is the world right now. It is over. <laughs> it is over. 
Hey, really quickly, Corey, you know we got a new email address because everybody inundated Keys' email. We got a new email address for all the music that, you know, you guys want to send in. It's Corey Holcomb 5150 show at gmail.com. I'm going to say it one more time. Corey Holcomb 5150 show at gmail.com. Send all your music selections there. We're going to get everybody in eventually, man. We can't play everybody, but we're trying to get to everybody. That's right. what I want right. you to know. Right. Like that beat right there, that shit was slamming. Right. You liked it? Man, let me tell you something. I like beats that bump. That shit was bumping. So what you like? Ukuleles and shit like that? <laughs> <laughs> Go deeper music in this bitch. <laughs> I, I like beats that bump. Oh, though. man. Sometimes you like the smooth, jazzy beats, huh? No, I actually like... Oh, we got to get the mic situation together. Uh, I think production-wise, 50, 50 always comes with it production-wise, beats. You talking about 50 Cent? Yeah, I love his Ain't production. Ain't them Dre beats? Uh, not all of them, no. Oh, I like uh, Ti's production too. You know, yeah. you know, I, I, you know. It's I, some I got a varied that, taste, man. I I I, I like that shit too. That Ti versus Ti, that shit he did. Oh yeah, where he yeah, was yeah. talking to himself. That beat in between there. Yeah, Bobby don't know what the fuck we talking about. I really Bobby don't. like Ti, goddamn. <laughs> well, who, all I want to know who's on bass, who's on drums, and who's playing keyboards. Man, ain't nobody doing that shit no more. <laughs> hey, hey, but Bobby, <laughs> what about your time, Mace? Did you? I mean, not Maze. Uh, M A Z M A L Z. Amazed. Yeah, I love Frankie Bravery. Yeah, man. yeah, they got a band, man. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, they got a band, man. Who was yeah, the greatest Bobby. band of your time? Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, yeah. that one motherfucker look crazy <laughs> than a motherfucker. <laughs> who, 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 Bobby? Who I'm talking about? Verdine. Boy, that is, his name Verdine. <laughs> yeah, bass player. <laughs> yeah, it's a nigga named Verdine. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, he, he looked like his name. One of the Verdine. baddest bass players you'll ever hear. Never taking that away from him, yeah. but he looked moist. <laughs> And Martian, <laughs> moist and Martian, a gay space nigga. This nigga got a, this nigga got a hole in his motherfucking uh, yeah. astronaut suit in the back <laughs> and, and in the mouth part. God damn it, this nigga be walking through space breathing. Hey, but he was in this <laughs> room. Oh. Oh, that motherfucker raw. You see how he say that? Them yeah. Earth with a five it motherfuckers. Was groove, they was, it was raw. Yeah. And they had information yeah. in that oh, music yeah, too, yeah, man. Yeah. Spiritual shit. Where have Spirit. all the flowers gone? We looking for them now. Shit, all the flowers was at the motherfucking Hyatt Hotel this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> <The motherfucker. laughs> oh, man. I said, they going to have to throw. I, I had motherfuckers dying. I said, they going to throw away every sheet in this hotel after this weekend. <laughs> Them towels ain't going to be worth a shit. They ain't got hot water. <laughs> Strong enough to get that dookie juice out the top. <laughs> when fags take over. Uh, uh, oh, you can't say fags. That's a derogatory It's too late. Word. You said it already. No, 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 no. I'm too creative for them to hold fag against me. Okay, good. Um, um, what, what would you call it? When anal scrub jobs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Go, keep going. Ass snakes. <laughs> One more. Uh, <laughs> One booty more. plumbers. Oh, <laughs> oh, what the fuck to say? Damn. Ooh, my lord, my lord. How was the show, though? The show was nice, man. You know what I mean? It's like... Where were you in the lineup? Well, they, they let Bruce Bruce go last. So you... Was, and I got uh, love for Bruce Bruce, but mm -hmm. it ain't good when people go after me. I'm just saying. <laughs> It's not really a good thing. <laughs> I, I, but I think word is getting out. After a while, motherfuckers going to be like, who on the show? Go on, let that nigga go left. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of tactics to get me off stage. Uh, Motherfuckers try to make sure they cut my time short or whatever. Yeah. But it's, it's a difference from when I'm up there <laughs> versus when a lot of people are up there. And that's, that it. is me tooting my own horn. But I'm that's doing good. this shit. I'm shit. living it. You yeah. know what I mean? Hey, man, when you when you uh, talk to Mitch, uh, Black Mitch, whatever he is, man, uh, tell him he done got it all in. And Tony started. Garbage ass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, Memphis man. Grizzlies did get swept, Bobby. Ain't no question about swept that. Swept the fuck out team. the playoffs. And that's the sign of no competition. When you get swept. Hold on now. That's Why the, the fuck wait, do wait, they wait, have so wait, much wait, wait. confidence and faith in Mike Conley? He's not an elite guard. Well, he got outplayed by the, the best point guard. Or not people saying the years. best. Get the Wait. fuck out of here. Okay, he's good. You know what? Tony Parker is yeah, excellent. He's in the top work. three. The, his body the, of work. No, no, no. no, no. Dad, I'm man. looking at his body of work. He three called rings, a break. Man. Westbrook got hurt. He caught a break. If That's Westbrook true. was playing, the motherfucker Oklahoma City Thunder would probably still be playing because I don't give a fuck what Tony Parker was doing. He ain't finna stay in front of Westbrook. 
Yeah. Westbrook ain't going to stand in front of him. She. She. Have you seen what happened when Oklahoma plays? Um, it's just a different San matchup. Antonio? Yeah, it's a tougher matchup. Tony Parker's age shows when he plays against a Westbrook. When he plays you gonna against You're going to run out of names uh, here in a minute. I'm a what? You're going to run out of names. No, 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 no. When he plays against a Derrick Rose, them younger, quicker guards. Keep naming them, though. Like, Tony Parker can score. Let, let me tell you something. I'm not taking nothing away from Tony okay. Parker. He, he is a beast. I, yeah. I think it's a shame that Steve Nash got two MVPs and he ain't got one. I peeped that on your Twitter mm-hmm. thing. That, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's a crime. Yeah. But no matter what, youth elite. It's going to be better than Tony Parker Elite because Tony Parker can score 37, but when he played against the Derrick Rose that on defense, Westbrook, yeah. they got 39 40 right with his ass. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got to guard a motherfucker. See, you ain't got to guard Mike Conley. You just got to stay in front of him. Yeah. Motherfucker, Derrick Rose, by the time that game over, um, that boy, uh, what's his name, Parker, yeah. going to have his knees iced down. That nigga going to have some <laughs> Evan Longoria knees. When he <laughs> yeah. So what did you think of um, Lana Holland trying to shove uh, Bayless up under the bench? Man, he, Lionel, I mean, what is this, Lionel Hollins? Yeah. yeah. He was frustrated yeah. because he didn't have the horses. Yes, he was. When yes, he you, was. You, you, that 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 organization traded away his, the, the his horses. Yeah, he did, man. His horses. That's yeah. why, that's his, the only thing that bothers me is that he had to play against the mirror because San Antonio is the same kind of team. You know, hard nose. They gonna play both ends, and they had some young gorillas, man. Uh, what's it, Green and yeah. uh, that other kid, six seven boy, uh, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Man, them cats is playing, man. But see, San Antonio is a balanced team. Yeah. They got inside. They got outside. And they got outside shooters. They got a deep bench. Yeah. Problem is, are they good enough to do what they did to the Heat a few years ago? No. You don't think so? Well, not to the Heat, but to, to, the, Cavs. Click to the Cavs. Last time LeBron faced San Antonio in the finals, he didn't have the horses to he battle. Was, he was a calf. Yeah. Right. He didn't have the horses to battle Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Ginobili. He going in now with the horses to battle. Just like this Indiana team that is a very good team. In the end, you're going to find out LeBron James is 6'9", and that boy George (laughs) is not going to be able to keep matching up with him night after night. Yeah, Best out of seven don't lie. That's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Best out of seven don't lie. That's for sure. So every year, Indiana go at it with him in the beginning, just like when uh, the the other team from California, Golden State, played San Antonio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They was going at him for a while. They should have won the first two games. But bottom line, best out of seven don't lie. That's That's right. (laughs) That's true. does not lie. That's why we at the house right now, and uh, I want to say thank you. Zach Randolph knees ain't getting no younger. No, you knew that was going to catch up to you guys anyway. You guys had the strongest, one of the strongest interior cores yeah, but of any NBA team. But you, when you trade, shoot. yeah, we when you shoot. trade away that killer from the outside, we was done. You can't balance the yeah, floor. We right. So now we just lock in on what your strength is yeah. and, and exclude everybody else. None of the players on Memphis are worth keeping, besides Zach Randolph. And the big boy Gasol. Gasol. Yeah. None know, of those really players are me. worth keeping, right. except. I would keep Tony Allen Hell yeah. because he's a he's a bulldog. He played right. defense. Right. I would even keep Tayshaun Prince. For, because hold, hold it right there. Hold for matchups. Hold it, hold it, hold it. For matchups on Did defense. Did you see what's name go by him? Uh, Kawhi Leonard boogaloo down that baseline. He, he did what? Like he, is a, he boogaloo right. down the baseline. Man, no, All right. No, no, uh, old boy, he is getting older. He is getting he older. Got but older. I like him if he got horses behind him. But he didn't, that ain't that kind of team, though. I, they needed him for something else. Them right. two yeah. I would keep. You rarely going to find a Tayshaun Prince, somebody yeah. that tall and agile. You know what I mean? Since yeah. we talking basketball, yeah. he's just not as fast as he used to be. But with horses behind him, he can do the same thing the boys doing in San Antonio. They got horses behind him. Now, how do you feel about what um, – uh, Jackson, Phil Jackson said if he was starting a team. Mm-mm. What did he say? He said if he was starting a team right now, he would start his team with Bill Russell. Over Jordan. And Kobe. Well, Phil Jackson is an old school guy. He, 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 when Phil Jackson was playing, he was, he was able to awe at Bill Russell. But Phil Jackson ain't stupid. What motherfucker? I heard Scotty <laughs> Pippen say some stupid shit about I pick whoever over Jordan. All them motherfuckers say stupid shit, but let me tell you something. 
<laughs> Bottom line, ain't no motherfucker deal what Air did in this goddamn league. That motherfucker won rings, and motherfuckers can say what they want to say. He didn't have like San Antonio. He had Scotty Pippen. That's what he had. Other than that, all the rest of the motherfuckers was interchangeable. Horace Grant left. Didn't matter. Give me another rebounder. He went and got Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Well, who was a travel man well, at the Dennis time. Dennis Rodman was no, always. Travelman. What do you mean? He'd already won he, two rings he already, with Detroit. With Detroit, but he was always at the top of the league, regardless of what team he went to, That's in baller, rebounding. Man. That's one of the and greatest defense. players. One of the greatest He ain't in the Hall of players. Fame for nothing. Dennis well, Rodman. No, yeah. what a, oh, he, he is a Hall of Fame rebounder and defensive player. They used yeah. to put him Stop on Shaq. Him. Yeah. And other people. I'm not taking nothing away from him, but yeah. if if if. If they would have got another rebounder who was good. Wasn't nobody like him. It would never will be again. What are you talking about? Dennis Rodman? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. I'm not Freakies. taking nothing away from Dennis Rodman, but when the Bulls lost to Orlando, mm. I think that was Orlando they lost to. Yeah. Nick Anderson. They didn't and, have yeah. that horse underneath. Like, they used to have Horace Grant. Right. They just needed a strong motherfucker to be underneath and let Jordan and Scotty, Jordan and Scotty Pippen, mm-hmm. they would shut down your backcourt. Right. Because Jordan defensively was elite. Scotty yeah. Pippen. Elite. Watching Jordan became elite. That's why I don't. I can never understand what Oklahoma did letting that boy go. Oh, you talking oh, about uh, oh. Harden? Yeah. You don't, yeah. you don't yeah. luck, up, luck up and get three like that yeah. on the same team. But you know what? In those small market teams, the like a, like a, a Memphis, yeah. like yeah. a Oklahoma, yeah. that's what the collective bargaining agreement is about. They, 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 they don't want it to be a monopoly between New York and L.A. So no, 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 a no. lot of those teams Oklahoma can't Oklahoma made it. a mistake and kept Ubaka over Harden. Harden. Yeah. It was a mistake that's going to cost them a championship. <sighs> Well, they were thinking about defense, yeah. Well, and that dude is you young. can get another rebounder. I know you hate to let him go because he developed in your system, but but you need somebody to attack Harden that three headed monster. Five. Yeah, <laughs> and Westbrook then he went to Houston four. and went off. Yeah, and Durant six ten. Yeah. that core yeah. can compete for years to come, but that yeah. core is gone now. Now yeah. Houston got a chance if they get the White House with crap baby ass and buy him a couple of lollipops, <laughs> give him some bubble gum, make him feel good, act like they his friends, put him on the Ferris wheel. You gotta keep I'm happy and shit. I want some candy. Get that pussy ass nigga some candy so he'll rebound. Oh, man. Michael Jordan just hired uh, uh, another coach. Uh, how do you rate him as a administrator, owner? Oh, man. Well, uh, unfortunately, Damn. I feel like Michael Jordan um, is used to getting his way. And the people around him ain't gonna tell him no. That's some stupid shit. <laughs> sure. I bet it ain't. I bet he ain't heard that shit from nobody In but a bitch. Twenty five years, <laughs> right. ain't nobody ever said nah, no. Man, that's, that's some stupid shit, hell. man. Don't do that shit. Mm. Ain't nobody gonna talk to him like that. Especially mm. when there's a uh, 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 Byron uh, what's Scott. It? No, not Byron Scott. For, that used to Shaw? coach Bri- Brian Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Brian Shaw. I get it, but sometimes that's a hell of a coach out there that nobody's given a look to. He gonna get a who job did Jordan hire? Some white boy from uh, the Clippers. I mean, no, he was Lakers. a Laker assistant. I don't yeah. even know never who he is. Never heard of him. Yeah, never heard of him. That's pretty bad. I that's mean, terrible. I mean, <laughs> Brian saying, Shaw is out there. But have you noticed that the elites never make good coaches and shit like that? Well, Co- Magic was terrible. Yeah, Magic. Yeah. Cause see, let me tell you something. Yeah. They still in competition. If you ask me, they still in competition mode. You can't expect them to do what you used to do. Right. right. Jordan was the type of motherfucker. You saw how LeBron James gave George Dapp for that dunk? Yeah. yeah, yeah Jordan yeah. would have never, never did that shit. Magic Jordan, wouldn't have done Jordan, it. Bird. Jordan would have been so motherfucking mad that he got loose for that motherfucking dunk. Because <laughs> Birdman caught the worst of that motherfucker. Yeah, Birdman yeah. showed up like, uh <laughs> Dumped on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he turned that nigga to a pigeon. Uh, <laughs> that motherfucker Mohawk was crooked and broke off uh, to the right. After he got through with dunking on his ass. Like, I was like, God damn, I know you hate you got caught like that. Man. Well, we got a bank full of calls, and it's time for us to uh, get a drum or something. Yeah, that's not nah, what's up. We'll take the break because, you know, and when we come back, we'll get it in. Yeah. Um, all the callers on the line, we're going to try to get y'all in today. And to oh. everybody who get their feelings hurt easily, please don't call the show with your uh, feelings hurt. <laughs> hey, hey, this person said this about me, man. That hurt my heart. Who you talking? Who, you, who you, you calling out? Never mind. I'm calling out people who get their feelings hurt. Okay. Is, I mean, I, I am a very um, 
I, I don't get moved easily. Uh-huh. And what I'm saying is, I want everybody to be their motherfucking self. And for everybody who get their feelings hurt, I just don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Look up the meaning of 5150. This is the <laughs> 5150 show. <laughs> so, but, but can I say this again? Go ahead. Judge the music. Would you say five stars or one star? If you like it, it's a five star. If you hate it, it's a one star. We got music coming in the break, right? Yeah, come on, let's do it. All right, there it is. Fifty one fifty. Be black. The white strap. B B B. It's a no no. It's it's a no no. Ooh, that was a no no. Yeah, what it was a no no? That shit. Pretty much covers it. Wow. In the chat room. What are they saying in the chat room about this here record? Booty digging music. <laughs> Walmart. Something they said. Mm. Anyway, hey man, it wasn't that bad. It's just yeah. it wasn't that bad. Y'all motherfuckers, be, y'all y'all scale too high. You really? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's hear a little piece of it again. Let's let's bring it back. Just, just ten to close seconds. The deal, huh? Okay. He said our scale is. T- Listen to this. Come on, Corey. Tenny shoes. Tenny shoes. Y'all don't like it. <laughs> you like it? Tell us the truth. I can't say it's bad, man. I don't think it's bad. I think it's something Honestly, different. I you? think I think they went a different way than the traditional rap way. And sometimes when you different, people gotta catch on to you. Like Kendrick Lamar to me is different, and I I, I well, didn't but, I didn't get it really. But I he's mean, good. I, but see, that's your opinion. I like a couple of songs, but did you buy the album? I got the album, yeah. And you like the whole album? Yeah, it's good oh, album. Hold it, hold it, see, hold that's hold why hold it's hold different hold strokes hold for different hold folks. Hold he asked you if you bought it. Yeah. You paid money. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar. Absolutely. Okay. First do, and foremost. Do you know who Kendrick Lamar is? No, I don't. Very popular rapper nowadays. I've seen his name out there, but I didn't know what, you know. Yeah, he's very popular nowadays. Stuff. And I listen to the album, and I, eh, that's just my opinion. Okay. That's just my opinion. Yeah, would you buy that song right there? And play it on your device, whatever. Just in the house. That ain't the Girl song head. you release. I well, put it like that off the album. That's not a song you release. Okay, off well, where album. would you listen to that song, Corey? If it's on the album and I don't feel like um, fast forward and I let it go through. <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't. I'm, I'm, I'm joking on it, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Okay. Y'all, 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 motherfuckers. Y'all just gotta have. It. I believe that people just have a certain beat in mind that they gotta hear how it's gotta go. Whoop Corey, you're a diplomat right now. I, I, I like it. I see. If, you. If, 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 I, if I something see. Sucks you. to me. I'll say it sucks. I didn't think it was bad like that. Okay. But it's all opinional. <laughs> really? Yeah. And opinion means something, goddammit, it, because we've all got different opinions of things. Like to me, um, uh, like Bobby shirt. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, Zohan as long as you tight. can handle the phrase, the phrase means. <laughs> what does it say? I, what does it say? It don't play. Oh, that's your, that's your shirt. Oh, that's your yeah. shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Shit is I just was Friday. using an example. Yeah. Looked like you had it on all day and cooked some meat in it, though, outside. <laughs> <laughs> Smoked some barbecue in that hey, motherfucker. <laughs> it's, it's the message, man. I'm into the message. I ain't worried about all that other style shit. I, I signify for a living, so I, yeah. I, I say stupid shit. It's yeah. not like, you know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah. So, so, America, I want you to know that all you people who, uh, who, who went out and voted, do you think your vote has done anything to change America for the better when you went out and voted this year? Because you made sure you got your man reelected. I'm 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 particularly talking to the black people. All that shit you did and said and whoop de woo. What do you do? You feel like this country is any different than it was before he took office? I, I mean, because hmm. I'm I'm just saying, like I feel like racism has not been um, addressed, and and. Gayism has been addressed. I don't feel like that's a coincidence, and it makes me mad, quite honestly, because things that happen to gay people, he speaks um, about mm. in, a, in a way like, you know, you see the passion in his eyes. But mm. the racism, if if I ever heard him say something about it, 
mm-hmm. it was hesitant. It wasn't as thorough as what happens to gay people in this country. Maybe black people are an afterthought. Maybe it doesn't matter in the big grand scheme of things. But this is what people need to know. You are taken for granted by this man. He will not speak on your behalf. Mm. You well, maybe it isn't just black people. Maybe it's just po people. Maybe it's more class than race. I hear that argument, and um, it still breaks down to race first. Uh, because even when you get money, it ain't your class that gets you treated like a nigga. It's that you are considered a nigga. And uh, one of Obama's close friends that we talked about on a couple of occasions had that experience. And he's he's in the 1%. Let me tell you something. I checked into the Lowe's Hotel on Miami Beach. That's, that's, up, that's, that's about as high up the chain as you can go. Mm-hmm. I saw them walking up to the brothers, and they might have ca- caught them smoking weed outside. Or whatever mm-hmm. petty shit, in my opinion. The police uh, uh, and the extra security, they had the cameras set up and everything. And uh, I was talking to this house nigga ass doorman. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, they going to get put out. They they going to go back there, take their picture, and they just going to get put out the hotel. They ain't got no business doing that. And I was looking at him like he was crazy. Like, they ain't got no business doing what? He said, like, smoking weed. Or, 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 or being loud and obnoxious outside the hotel. And this is shit I see Caucasian people do all the fucking time in front of <laughs> hotels. I have seen Caucasian people climb on shit. And the security will come out there and help them down and tell them, you guys go ahead. You're going to get hurt. Come right. down. Right. right. <laughs> so anyway, all this is going on. And this brother is justifying the shit. So I'm just sitting there. I didn't even say nothing to him. I was frustrated by his conversation. But I was still listening to him to see him justify what's happening to people that's out here trying to have a good time. Ain't nobody fighting or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't no shit like that. So here I am. Then spent all this money on a fucking room. And I got there early, so my room wasn't ready. So I was tired because I caught a red-eye flight. Mm. So I wound up sitting on the couch in the lobby, and I dozed off. Mm -hmm. And the police walked up to me. Are you a guest in this hotel? (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) Am I a guest in the hotel? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I was like, what happened? Oh, you can't be lounging around out here. I said, you can't be lounging around. I'm waiting on my room. What are you talking about? It's a lounge. That motherfucker said, go get some coffee or something, but you can't be out here sleeping. What? Are you serious? Man, let me tell you something. This is why I hate niggas like that doorman. Because you ain't <laughs> got to be doing nothing. All you got to do is be black. Wow. And the motherfuckers going to walk up to you like you did something wrong. Now, and if he scored a little higher on his SAT, he wouldn't be a doorman. <laughs> well, now, well, he was man. built to be a. a, a he house was built nigga. to I, be a. a the, I saw how proud he was <laughs> to have on that jacket to and open up that yeah. door. I, he was going to open up the door for these uh, black people pulled up, but he saw some white people in the cab behind him, and he left them niggas. Wow, <laughs> this was <laughs> what's that motherfucker name? Steven. Oh, uh, Steven. Steven's this was, dad. <laughs> yeah, this, this was Steven, the but he third. was a mild mannered Steve. Oh, oh wow. he had no idea that he's not supposed to get treated like. Shit. So, how did you resolve that situation with the Well, I went up uh, to the front people. desk, and I told him, I said, I don't feel comfortable staying in this hotel. You guys got these police around here profiling people mm. and just fucking with them. And I wear, I'm black. I wear baseball caps. Mm-hmm. I wear, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. T-shirts and shit. These motherfuckers just walked up to me and said something. Well, you do know. The motherfucker told me to go get some coffee. I said, I don't drink coffee. Mm-hmm. So that shit could have went bad. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and I right. ain't done shit. I'm just there. Right. They talked me into not switching my room out because I was going to just go get another room at another hotel. Mm-hmm. But I was so fucking sleepy, they just found a way to get me a room then. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, Did I they was apologize like, or did they acknowledge that that was like... Well, they apologize, but it's not... Your apology means nothing. Your... You you don't you you have a task force of officers that are here for Memorial Day weekend, and their job is to run niggas away. Oh, but check this out, Corey. Check. Let's look at it in terms of the different industries. Allen Iverson comes into the league. 
He revolutionizes the league's image because he kept it real. Baggy shorts, braids. And then a few years after that, David Stern was like, no, nah, we're going to do a dress code. We're going to change. We're going to clean up the image. Right. Take hip hop. Gangsta music comes in and starts becoming the most popular form of music. I think, especially to the police, if we want to talk about profiling, there was a time when you look at Magic Johnson or you look at, you know, Michael Jordan. You remember that movie, uh, Do the Right Thing, when he said, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince, they not niggas. They're, they're, you know, he, you remember that scene where he didn't want to call them black people because they were high-end entertainers? I think now it's all starting to merge together. So they see the basketball player, Steven, remember Steven Jackson, right? It's shooting outside the strip club. They see that guy, and that's an NBA basketball player. They see the thug, the rapper, and the sport dude, and maybe, quote unquote, the entertainer. When you got Chris Brown and Frank Ocean fighting in a parking lot or, you know, Drake and, and Chris Brown fighting in a club. Now they're starting to see entertainment, black, sports, rap. All of that as one big, this is one big gang. So we're going to profile them all. I th and I think that's probably what you encountered. Just a stereotype. Well, I I'm going to tell you like this, though. I think everybody needs to hang out around Caucasian people <laughs> for a week and see how they act. I just want, they you, probably to see how they, as hell. I want you to see how they conduct themselves mm -hmm. and how they are treated by the police. And then I want you to hang out at a black event. And I right. want you to see how black people conduct themselves and how they are treated by the police. And you will see a difference in the shit we go to jail for, the shit that we are uh, tapped on the shoulder about. If Chris Brown um, gets into a fight at the club, mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, so what? Because I'm going to tell you something. I witnessed these two white guys mm -hmm. get into a fight in McDonald's on Rush Street in Chicago. Um, busy McDonald's. Mm -hmm. These guys were going at it, fist to cuffs. I saw the police break it up, told his friend, get this guy, put him in a cab, and take him home. Mm. My mouth dropped. <laughs> I said, wow. The police did that? The police said, get your friend, put him in a cab, take him home. He's drunk. That's what he said. <laughs> get this him home. Drunk. Get him home. <laughs> so you so when you tell me about somebody getting into a fight, Mm -hmm. I don't even want to hear that shit. What happens in this country to black people is different than what happens to everybody else. And this cowardly ass president will not address this issue. And it makes me mad that people act like he is somebody to recognize as a as a groundbreaker or whatever. No, motherfucker. Use the motherfucker that they chose over the worst <laughs> motherfucker ever. <laughs> You talking about <laughs> W? Uh, well, he was Bush. done. He was. He was <laughs> McCain. Done. No, he. Uh, he he did his two years. McCain. His, 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 and the person, Sarah Palin. Yeah. Sarah Palin. Yeah, two yeah. of the biggest knuckleheads in in, in presidency <laughs> history, presidency candidate. You know history. I, I, I'm just saying. It's like. I speak on this because I know what it is to get on airplanes and be in first class and. Every time, I'm, I, I, it don't happen every time, but a lot of times as I walk over to the priority lane, um, the people are like, oh, this is the priority lane. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Why are you Because I got on a jogging suit. You know what I mean? I don't have on a suit and a, and a briefcase and talk with a high voice or get Jason Collins lip gloss on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh. It's like, I, I'm, I'm seeing it. All you got to do is... <laughs> It's be a fish out of water, and it really becomes disrespectful as you have paid your dues in society where you have enough to do this and do that, and you still get that fucked up treatment. Wow. Mm. You don't have to be fighting in the club to be treated bad. Mm. All you got to do is just Just be you. Show, show up. up. Wow. <laughs> we got Black while walking. We got crazy callers. Corey, you want to deal with them? Hey, uh, 5150 Show, this is the first caller. Who's this? This is Fam the Great from Charlotte. What up, Corey? What's up, brother? What did he say his name was? This is Fam the Great from Charlotte. I, 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 Fam I, the Great. I, 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 yeah, about the bitch you got down broke in my crib last night. Oh, I know this dude off Twitter. He got the funniest oh. Twitter picture in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. So you, this, he told me that a bitch 
She didn't break in your crib. The bitch got a key made, right? Yeah, she got a key made, right? And I'm glad you called me talking on this topic tonight. She got a key made, right? When I was asleep, I was drunk on some drunk shit. You know, I think I lived by Walmart. She went and got the shit made on me. Right. So, so that damn, you know, I'm out with my, I, got, I got a little white Russian bitch here. You know what I'm saying? I'm out last night hanging out with her and shit. Strike two, motherfucker. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at the concert and shit. My phone blowing up like a motherfucker from Syracuse and 704-336 or whatever. That's the police department here. So I finally get home. She called me. Hey, fam, I did some fucked up shit. We need to talk. I like, would you do? You fucking other nigga? Goddamn, that ain't shit. I been fucking bitches anyway. They ain't been killing me. So I, I ain't, that don't bother me. So I get to the crib. She just put the key on the account. Like, yeah, I had a key to your place. The police came over. You know, I tried to put your alarm code in, and it didn't work. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? You get a key made in my spot? You know, so the police is coming back over. The thing is, they let her go. I don't know why the fuck they did that shit. Right. And, um, that you know why they let her go? They let her go. Why you think they let her go? Oh, because she a woman. Did you just say black, she was black, Russian? Black they don't give a fuck. She was a <laughs> Caucasian woman, and she. No, this is a this is a black chick who who did this shit. That was a, well, know, a black was a black chick. bitch from what? Russia. <laughs> no, I, no, a no, blushing. no. The bitch I was not with was from Russia, but my main bitch is black. <laughs> okay. <you> crazy. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I, it's fucked up that a woman got a key made to your house, and you know the police didn't take her to jail for that. Right. So you know the police told me when they, they was calling my phone or whatever. They tell me, "Yo, when we call you, you need to answer the phone." <laughs> oh. That was the excuse they tell me why they ain't doing. If I didn't take her to jail and shit. That's what the police told you. When we call they you, you better answer the phone. <laughs> That's what they had tell the motherfucker nigga. <laughs> I ain't shot. None of that shit you tell me shocks me. The police will act like they're a lawyer, just like that motherfucker told me I need to go get some coffee. Oh. Yeah. I hey. almost bit my tongue off what I wanted to tell him what he needs <laughs> go to go get. Go get yourself <laughs> something to drink right but, now. Uh, right, Don't just be sitting on these couches. Right. <laughs> you go to sleep in your room, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and the crazy thing, Corey, I flew back from, I flew back from um, Cleveland. You know, I was, I was in Cleveland in, um, in Akron or whatever over the weekend. I was flying back in first class for my job and shit. And I got in the goddamn priority line. You know, the first one to get on the plane. Them crackers looked at me like I ain't supposed to be there. That's why I always look crazy when I ride the airplane. Hey, I got a quick question for you. Uh, what motivated this woman to make a key to your house? Man, I get fucked up a lot, Bobby. Probably like how you do sometimes, you know. And <laughs> I ain't never got that. No, I ain't. Look here. I done got, I done got fucked up, man. But I, I asked you a question that has nothing to do with getting <laughs> fucked up. I just asked you how you ended up with a gal that, that was bold Did you say enough. a gal? A gal. gal. Yeah. I understand. A, a, a gal that, that, that felt comfortable enough making a key to your house. She always trying to catch me some shit, man. I be fucking around a lot. You know, I keep it a hundred. I keep I fuck around a lot. She but what's that got to do with making a key house. to your house? Yeah. <laughs> what's in, in there? <laughs> she thought she'd do my, emergency, my alarm code, too. And I, I would love to see her when the, when the cock rolled up on her ass and got damn that, that alarm ain't work. But the shit went off. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm just. Up, I was just man. curious, man. I. I you know. Thanks oh, for the man. call. She, she, she crazy though, man. She a crazy mm -hmm. chick. All oh. the bitches crazy. No. Thanks for the call, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's fuck that. Woo. That's I, some new shit. That if a motherfucker made a key to my motherfucking house. <laughs> that will. That will encourage me to do some awful shit. To her. Some awful sneaky shit. God damn it. I will do. I will. I will be creative as I get her back. Wow. I'll be creative mm -hmm. about it. Hey, wow. next caller. I'm caller. still trying to di digest that one. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot Ooh. going it's on. Corey Holcomb, who this? Mm. Hello? Yeah. What up, Mike? How you doing, Corey? What's, What's up, going man? on, Joe? What's happening? What's going on, Bobby? Hey, brother. This is from Atlanta. What okay. Up, ATL in the house? Welcome hey. to the show. Hey, Corey, a couple of weeks ago you said when you go on tour, you bring two people with you. The dude you had on that opened for you in Atlanta... Um, was that one of the dudes you was talking about? Uh, who opened? You know how he looked? Uh, he was that old cat. He talked kind of slow, but he was funny. Derek Allen. Yeah, him. Yeah. Was yeah. that the one of the dudes? You said you only uh, roll with two people because you know they're funny. I said I roll with a couple of people. I got about four guys I fuck with all together. That was the one I, I used know. that week. Yeah, and uh, my topic is uh, what y'all think about that uh, Sergio Garcia making that comment towards Tiger? Oh, about the chicken? Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure we have some fried chicken because Tiger is going to have his dinner or something. They're going to have well, a dinner for Tiger and make sure the chicken is there. Fried I think chicken. that was a backhanded way of calling him a nigga. Well, it was. Well, you got to remember it. 
Sergio Garcia is also Spanish. And they and they, they were they conquered by by the Moors and yeah. and they and never forget right that. Since. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, this is what I got to say about the shit. Tiger Woods will never get the respect he deserved until he slapped the shit out of motherfucker. <laughs> Why the fuck he gonna slap the shit out of him? Should he, he have slapped him? him? It's it's so disrespectful to slap a man. Yeah. Mm. When you just walk up to a man and slap the shit out of him. And get Why it over won't he with? slap the shit yeah. out of him? So you telling me Tiger's stock would have shot through the roof if he would have walked up to Sergio and slapped him dead in the mouth? He would have got all kind of liquor sponsors. <laughs> it would have just made his career boom. <laughs> yeah. You got to slap the shit out of somebody one day, man. Mm. I think it's just part of being out here in the public. <laughs> just I smack saying, somebody. I, I am not the one who tell people to fight because that ain't the solution most of the time. Mm. But you got to slap the shit out of somebody one day, man. <laughs> you got to put work in one day so people in the streets can see it. So they can understand. Right. So they you can got know. to. Wow. I first moved to California, you got there. I remember I was hooping at the gym. This motherfucker, he was tall. I told him, I say, that tall shit ain't going to be enough, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt so good to ball this motherfucker up in front of him. I didn't know none of them motherfuckers. Right. And I noticed when they broke it up, they was pulling me. And I ain't like that shit. But that motherfucker didn't want no more. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to set an example. <laughs> this, this tall motherfucker. I keep telling you, man, tall ain't shit. It don't yeah. mean. Hey, yeah. what, what do you think? Do you think maybe... Sergio said it because he knew he wasn't going to get in any real trouble, and all he really has to do is apologize. Because that's what they do. They apologize. The apology isn't, you know, I think it ain't he did shit. Because he know Tiger wasn't going to slap the shit out of him. Mm. Wow. I mean, if there was a threat. If Zach Randolph was playing golf, he wouldn't have said that shit to <laughs> Zach true. Randolph, would he? If Suge Knight was playing right. golf, making noise. Know, when he see that motherfucker, he going to he gonna have to recognize. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Lack of having to recognize will make little goofy motherfuckers <laughs> like Sergio say sucker shit like fried chicken for my dinner or when he at the house. Mm. Wow. When, when motherfucker ain't got to recognize your ass. Mm. Mm. Wow. So you saying Tiger is a bitch and the word is out on the street. Man, you know he a bitch if he let his bitch chase him out the house with a motherfucking golf club and make him crash his car. And then said he did it. Right. Yeah. Police take me to jail and ain't because I ran out the house. It's because that bitch I closed. <laughs> <laughs> they took it too far. Man. That's what I'm going to tell them. When they knock on the bitch, tried me too many times. <laughs> Now, when this bitch eye open, <laughs> she ain't going to forget what happened. Regardless of what y'all do to me. I don't want to go to jail. Wow. If this bitch ain't going to run me out the house, you got a golf club. Swing that motherfucker. You're mm. going to get that one good hit. Mm. You better hope you knock me unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't scared of no woman with a golf club. Wow. Oh, man. A man with a golf club is different than a woman with a golf club. Do we agree? Oh, without a doubt. You telling me a woman can't knock you out with a That's golf club? That's why I say you better knock me out. I'm going with if a woman is rushing me with a golf club, I'm gonna try to put my arm up, block it. After that hit, and I flip my <laughs> wrist around and grab that golf club. <laughs> This bitch is about to go through some shit. <laughs> this bitch is about to go through some shit that's going to make us say, you know what? That motherfucker will hit a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker will hit a bitch. Don't, wow. don't fuck with him. Wow. Oh, my God. Callers, you're on the line right now. Corey hey, Holcomb, 5150. 50. Yo, this Corey Holcomb and Bobby and Joe. And <laughs> what up, caller? You're on the air. Man, it's Jay the boss, man. What up, Jay? Hey, man, hey, yo, Corey, man, listen, man. You know I fucks with you all the way in such and such to the third, right? That's what's up. All right, but, you know, and I love to talk shit about women as much as the next man. Right. But every now and then, I just got to keep it 400, man. Okay. What I'm about to say, I know a lot of motherfuckers going to hate me for this shit, but I got to say it, man. <laughs> I know that you set it up. <laughs> you set it up good. <laughs> <laughs> now go with it. I'm tired of all these dudes running around here talking about some bitches ain't shit, man. Straight up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because I seriously hope and pray these motherfuckers ain't at the club trying to get at other dudes, man. Are you talking about they so fed up with women they start fucking with men? No, no, no. They, they always say bitches ain't shit, but I say I hope they not at the club trying to get at other dudes. I don't understand what he's saying. I, I, I'm kind of confused. I think he's saying, that, like what you just said, niggas are so fed up with women 
that they would secretly be at the club trying to holler at other dudes? That is ain't what you yeah. saying, is no. it? Yeah. That's what you're saying? Then I, yeah. you don't lost me even further now. Yeah, we... Yeah. we yeah. If you justify <laughs> dick boxing with a dude... <laughs> <laughs> you always wanted to dick box with dude. Right. You always wanted a sword fight. These bitches don't like funny? Watch this. Fuck that, nigga. You had, that, you had dick and balls on your mind. The right? whole time. Yeah. You love going to the locker room and taking showers slow. <laughs> so, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what about the women? What about the women that say, man, I'm so tired of these niggas, and then they start fucking with bitches? They already fucking with bitches. Mm, it's, already, always, yeah. it's always a way to justify what you're doing. Mm. If you don't fuck with bitches, you don't fuck with bitches. If you don't fuck with niggas, you don't fuck with niggas. Mm, that's what it is. I don't give a fuck how much, I don't give a fuck how many conniving bitches I come across, I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's another. really that simple. No, that's yeah. true. That's why God ain't let me get a lot of money yet, because he know I'm gonna have apartments set up. I'm gonna have bitches <laughs> thinking they coming over my career beating on the door. Bitch, I don't live that. <laughs> that's the trap. Hey, one last thing though. One last thing though. Go ahead, brother. When you fucking with a chick, do you ask him how many eggs they done fuck? Now, I don't ask that shit no more. I don't give a fuck. Every time I fuck a bitch, I feel like I'm in harm's way and I could die. No, 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 no. Wow. I ain't talking about just no chick. I'm talking about a chick you about to get serious with. What difference does it make? You know, oh, it makes a whole lot of difference. Why? That's a good question, though. That's a good question. Okay, We listen, did that today. Marty, if you're from the wife of a chick up and you walking down the street and motherfuckers pointing and laughing at you, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Well, motherfuckers pointing and laughing because everybody done ran through your chest. But what if they didn't, what if you didn't have a, 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 an encounter like that? You gonna just ask that question anyway? Um, well, you most likely, well, you're right. Yeah, well, that's the end of his argument. Thanks, man. We <laughs> no, really appreciate it. I get it, it. I get it. But yeah. the history of your woman pussy, uh, is that something do you want to know? I mean, like, <laughs> If, if y'all done got serious, I think most guys going to ask her how many dicks been up in her, but she can't tell you the truth because she don't want you to lose respect for her. Then why ask? If you got an inner city woman. Are you saying women are ashamed of their sexual history? Inner city women who come from poor neighborhoods with no dad then had about 15 dicks in them by the time they 25. Wow. About 15 dicks. <laughs> Three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. We're gonna do a recap of the We're gonna do a recap of the Vag Fact Show. Let's uh, go on and do it. The Pussy Fact Show. Let's let's see. Uh, like, like, are you in a serious relationship now, Zoe? No, I'm on hiatus. Are you on hiatus? Yeah. What about you, Bobby? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm serious as a motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'd have done that shit when I was a young guy. Ask about how many, how many guys you fuck. And it's always around about the same number. Well, I let's ask. On. Let's ask. If you're a woman on the line, we'd like to talk to you. 323-965-1600. We really want to know, by the age of 25, how many swipes were sheathed? <laughs> That's over my head, man. You're going to break that one down. That's what vagina means. It, it's a sheath. Like where you sheath a sword. Man, I ain't never heard that one. That's where it comes from. Every day is a school day. It's yeah. a blue out wet sleeve. <laughs> a blue out <laughs> wet sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Call us 323-965-1600. We got to take a break. And when we come back, oh, I mean, you know, that blue out wet sleeve, we can talk about that motherfucker's <laughs> no, boat. Oh, them, uh, them blue out water balloons. Wow. <laughs> right. We, 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 got a song. we got a song for you with an interesting title. It's called uh, I Fucked Her. Uh, by Mike the Rockman. Mm. Hit it. Wow. Yeah, it's your boy Park K. Okay. Another Perks Entertainment collab. Uh, Pimp and Jelly Fan and Cheese. Real and Money's performing six thousand wild burgers. Yeah, y'all might have respected LA, but never gave none to the Bay. What can I say? H to the Izzo, V to the Izzo. Oh boy, in the street, been playing Mac Drizzo. Oh damn, Dizzy. Hey, is there a book you can buy uh, or something <laughs> try to, to decode this shit, man? Because I had a lot of catching up to do, man. It's rapping too fast for you, man. I ain't heard it. I heard it, but I don't. I can't tell you what he said. Wow. Well. What do you guys think in the chat room? I want to see the numbers. Ones for terrible, fives for great, and anything in between. Okay, Corey, what you got on that? Somebody put minus 100. <laughs> <laughs> One out of five? One yeah. out of five. 
shit. Tell it. <laughs> Just tell the truth, Corey. That wasn't one of the numbers. It was a two. <laughs> but like it's not something you'll keep listening to. Like, like, like if, if uh, you, I look at it like this: if I bought an album for somebody, like that song, I would not, I wouldn't rewind that song. Okay. I wouldn't be like, oh, I gotta hear that. So shit maybe again. that's maybe that's the the litmus test. If we don't rewind your shit, right? It's mm. a failure. Can we just be honest? Go ahead. Try it. You might like it. It's all no, opinion. I'm just saying. I just think for real, it's not easy. I know everybody wants to get in the studio and make records, but it's not easy. You got to have some talent. When you in that motherfucker, goddamn, motherfuckers be like, man, I'm cold. Check this out. I'm from the South. My mama mouth came out with all that sperm. Everybody oh. knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I tell you this, though. Mm. What's good for, for a young artist that's going in the studio, have... I don't know if it's, a, if it's a gang of niggas around, but have the realest dudes around you that this will tell you do. the truth. This is what we're going to do. Fuck all that. On the 5150 show next week, me, Zoe, and Bobby all got to come up with a beat, I mean, with, with a verse on the rap side so people could judge our shit. Oh, shit. Oh, you set me up for failure, you did. Bobby, you, you, can, know, you, can write, you can write words to rhyme, right? Write, write yeah, some poetry. Words to rhyme, but it put these motherfuckers to sleep. You know, I ain't gonna just. You gotta, you, it won't put them to sleep if you rap about what you're going through. Oh, but that, rap about that's your the life. blues, though. That's the blues. <laughs> yeah, but do it in a rap. All right, I'll give it a I shot. I think everybody wants to well, see let's you rap. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> What's a, wear a rapper suit next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's not easy, though. It's I, not I, easy. I, I can tell good. right now. Man. We got a sister on the line, man. Uh oh. Is she going to talk about the um, Blue Out Gangbanger fighting shirt sleeve? Let's find out what she got to say. <laughs> Yo, this is the 5150 show. Uh, who this? Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Hey, my name is Chaz. I'm from Connecticut. Okay. How old are you? Uh, I am 32. Mm, all right. Okay. And what's the count? The count? Oh, God. I don't know. You How many guys have you had sex with in your life? And if you if you don't want to tell the truth, then say I don't want to talk about. It. Uh, because you do know, know you Maybe remember. I want to say I don't want to talk. About it. I don't know. You do. You do remember. Don't <laughs> all girls remember now? No, they girls. don't. Yeah, you mean to tell me girls have so many sex partners that they get sexual you got amnesia? Damn right. <laughs> girls don't remember all them motherfuckers. You don't know what she was going through. So, do you hear what Corey is saying? You've been through so much so, that you so don't I remember. Well, just give a low number, then you just times it by. It. No, I'm just kidding. It's over twenty five. Um, <laughs> wait, but how, wait, how did y'all just hit me with the bullshit? As, right. as soon as I get on the phone, we just asked. Is, is it over twenty five? Is it over twenty five? It was over twenty five. Wait, 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 but first, wait, but before we, before I go any further, I, yeah, I really want to just say it was over twenty five. What? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, would say, I, would, I would say it's at least in the 20s. Okay. I would say that. That's okay, baby. It's, I, not, it's, not, it's not like I had like a, a, note, a notepad keeping track of anything, but uh, right. I, that, that's pretty much how it is. Yeah. But, um, she but pretty hey, responsible. I want to say, um, say at least shout out to um, Jay Nasty and so wonder. I don't know how the fuck they get in every week, because that was crazy. Okay, well, you in here now. Yeah. Use Thank your God. time wisely. Yeah. Oh, but, but, Corey, <laughs> while, I had, while I had you on the phone, I just want to say... Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Massachusetts in August. Yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely going to go to the show. I have my ticket already. And um, actually, I have been waiting for you to come to the Funny Bone in Connecticut. But um, I guess I'll see you in the hoop you out. Either way, I'm pretty sure I can still see your jokes because Tony Roberts is coming. So. <laughs> right. You know, that joke's still an ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm wow. sure I'll probably still hear your jokes if I go see him. That's right. A- you gonna see somebody joke. <laughs> <laughs> might, be, might be a couple people, huh? All right, Hell yeah. The oh, pressure on the motherfucker. I'm, I'm sorry, I know I got a lot of people on the phone, Do but I just want to say, like, like, for real, to all the women out there who don't like Corey or is offended by his jokes, just kill yourself because this shit is fucking funny. Mm. Corey is a fucking truth. I swear everything. I, I mean, was like, I, this shit is fucking jokes. I mm. think that some people take it too seriously. They feel like I'm talking about them. And I don't Maybe know you them. are. Maybe you are. I don't know them. 
But maybe but you're feel, talking about uh, these situations. But I feel situations? like if you, if you if you take if you take it as seriously, then you really look at yourself and figure that's, out what the fuck is wrong with you because right, these are fucking jokes. Thank you. I'm, you're a confident sister. You didn't had over Very twenty much. dicks in you. You done bust plenty nuts in this world. <laughs> God has blessed you. God has <laughs> blessed you. <laughs> blessed you with skeet juice flying up out that blue out sleeve. You got now. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> it's all good, baby. Thanks well, for calling. More ladies. Really? More ladies. Please call in 323-965-1600-5150. Show. crazy ladies calling in. Mm. Let's see. Girls are going to call. Hello. Dick count. That's Hold what we Nah, I'm just fucking. Hey, <laughs> what, we, we got another call on the line? 5150. What up? Who did? What's up, man? This is Bizzle from uh, North Carolina. What up, Bizzle? Shit. Same old, same old. Um, I, I had a point and a question, and I'm sorry to deviate from the current topic of the VAG facts and shit, but... um, <laughs> It's all good. The first point was that, um, you know, a lot of people I talked to, they, they're saying that Obama was put into the office so motherfuckers will make sure they ain't no motherfucking black president for a long-ass time. And, Mission accomplished. You know, I'm not talking about anything that um he's done while in office, but, you know, they kind of set him up for failure because, in my opinion, Bush fucked up the economy. And then everybody, you know... They just gonna blame the president. I'm saying when Bush was in, in the office, they blamed him, and now they blame Obama. I, but, um, I, well, you got something to say, Bobby? Uh, I just had a, a short question. Uh, I, I'm 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 acclimating to all of these new names in this this modern era. What's the origin of Bizzle? Oh, um, I, I ain't want to call up and um give his real name my real name I mean it was either Dizzle or Dead Set it's not a figure <laughs> oh okay, okay. All right. All right, I so want to say this though about off. Obama I, I don't I don't I don't feel like Obama has nothing to do with a fucked up economy or nothing like that I believe that he has a mouth and what he is too afraid to say is what I judge him off of you don't have a beer with a motherfucker that arrest somebody who then obviously found a way to put themselves in a position where they not out there on they just like me he 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 ain't did shit <laughs> trying to and go you home. had a beer with the motherfucker that arrested him mm. that's cowardly you look like a coward that's my that's my whole thing about Obama wow somebody wants to know the number real quick let me give it up three two three nine six five. 1600 if you're trying to call in keep calling 323-965-1600 that's the number to dial we appreciate the call is it dizzle drizzle or bizzle it don't matter it, was, was, it wasn't real, real anyway name. oh okay one <laughs> name myron appreciate the call nonetheless man way to call myron mcpretty cookie <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey, get that Ooh. next call on, man. Yeah. We crack it on the day. What up, man? This the 5150 show. Be yourself, express yourself, but say your name first. Who did? Am I on? Yeah, 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 you on, brother. What's up, goddammit? What's this up, This is Memphis, everybody? Tennessee, what's boy. I bet Bobby say you up? from Memphis. You already know what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first point I want to make. You better rap that name. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop that trick. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go, Bobby. Y'all got to represent Tennessee because I know Corey's going to come hard. He's from the shaft. So Next week, I'm going to have a cold-ass vote. <laughs> <laughs> Let people judge yeah. our mercy. Oh, boy. That, that's my first point. I guess I got two more points and a shout-out I want to do. My, my uh, second point is... If you want to ask your chick how many dicks she done had up in there, all you got to do is take the number she tells you, add 10, and then add about three more she sucked before she starts fucking. Wow. <laughs> that's, wow. Hey, that's, hey, that, that's good shit. That's a good, wow. that's a good way to think about that shit because they ain't going to never tell you how many dicks been up in her. Yeah. They done had a oh, couple yeah. of bad weeks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sometimes the right. rent money ain't there. Mm. So what's your yeah, shout yeah, out, my, man? Who you want to send a shout out to? No, go ahead. Uh, hold up. My, my second point is about uh, Obama. Now I don't, I, I, ain't, I don't just know everything about how he grew up 
But with my common knowledge, I don't know if I'm the only one who may think like this, but when you have a black daddy and a white mama and your black, and your daddy is always Africa, you growing up with your mama. Your mama white, you only going to grow up around white folks. So hmm. he ain't been around no strong black man growing up to be a strong black man in Austin. That's just me. I don't know, though. Just no, 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 no. Your point is correct because only a motherfucker who ain't been around real motherfucking men would say, it doesn't matter uh, if you're a man who marry a man. You, you, that means you right. ain't grew up around no men. Mm. <laughs> you grew up exactly. around a bitch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you got bitch rules in your life. Mm. <laughs> That's how I feel about you. So keep coming, Memphis, while you got the flow. Yeah, we can, I know y'all talking shit because I'm hollering this bitch y'all can't stand this shit. Fuck y'all, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thanks, right, for man. thanks for the call. Thanks for the call, man. You know what? There's been a big question out there if Barack Obama is truly African American. Well, who is African American? You know, they just basically saying African Americans share a common struggle. And seeing that who his said dad, that though? I mean, that's that's. I mean, you can look at a. Uh, Jesse a, Jackson started that bullshit. Is that who started it? Hell yeah! I mean, man, look, the same one tried to Jesse marry. Jackson. That's great. It doesn't matter that's if you good. black, you will encounter the evil of what Caucasian people do. It don't matter wow. if you're in Africa. They took over Africa. Right. Got you all the resources. Got right. everything. They yeah. stole every motherfucking thing. <laughs> mm. And everybody's scared to say that shit. I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. if you check the history of what they have done on this planet, it's really some shit they can't defend. Well, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey, if you want to argue that point, you can. But I'm right. just saying, if you if you look at your history, I'm talking about Caucasian people in this country. We all try to get along with people. I don't see Caucasian people and all of a sudden start shit with them. But. I'm like, when they talking, I'm looking at them like, hey, mm. what the fuck you up to? <laughs> talking to me, you want something, motherfucker. What the fuck you up to? Right. Mm. The pilgrims came over here and started talking to the Indians. Next thing you know, they was like, get out there! <laughs> 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 no, that's true. It was like that sheep. Run, Ned, run! <laughs> that commercial. <laughs> yeah. yeah, give him these blankets. Right. <laughs> yeah, the no. only thing, sometimes it seems like it's a, it's a, a disagreement, but it really isn't in my estimation because I, I feel where you're coming from, especially from my era and what I done had to go through from being born colored, uh, going to the, to the happy to be a Negro. I mean, happy to be a Negro. <laughs> Happy, happy. That was a big day, man, when they changed that that C to an N. Negro. Okay, good Negro. Then we black and proud. Mm. And then I got confused with this African shit. All right, African-American. All right, I'm, I, I can't trace myself back to Africa. And now Jesse Jackson has told me I'm supposed to just drop the black shit that I'm cool with. Because that's what everybody calls me anyway, black motherfucker. So I'm like, okay, I'm all right with that. And now I got to be an African-American. I'm, I'm out of touch. And all of that shit goes back to what we think of ourselves. And so when I think of what I think of myself, I think of myself first and foremost as a human being. I ain't seen nobody get out of here alive yet. So as cool as these white folks think they are, they die, they bleed just like we bleed. That this is what we think of ourselves that becomes tricky. Because they put these labels on you, and if you go for that shit, then you start putting up barriers in front of yourself that ain't even there. Man, it's like when they put that elephant on a stake, he get to go into that circle. Two generations later, they pull the stake out of the ground, he's still going in that circle, man. Mm-hmm. And now point. we get into a trick bag over language. I've been using, I use nigga without even knowing it. Sometimes I say nigga and didn't even realize it came out of my mouth. <laughs> Right. But I've heard it all my life, different way. It's the way you say it to to say some compliment. Man, that's a badass nigga right there. Man, that nigga cold. Right. And that man, fuck that nigga. <laughs> That'll get you shot. Mm-hmm. Tone and delivery. You see what I mean? Tone and delivery. And then when they throw that back in our face, well, y'all, you, it was a guy got fired just uh, a couple of days ago. Worked at Papa John's. Okay, he delivered a pizza to some Negroes, and uh, the Negroes gave him a five dollar tip. And he was expecting 10 or 20 based on the neighborhood or whatever. He got back in the car. Somehow he made a call, and it ended up connecting the house he had just left and his boy at the Papa John's, right? He said, man, this nigga gave me a $5 tip. 
And the guy that owned Papa John's had to come out and say, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We just fired him. Him and the boy who signed off on that with that rah-rah shit just got rid of both of them because you niggas' money is, is keeping me up in the big house. <laughs> he didn't say that part, of course, but that's what it come down to, right? So it ties into this topic of racism, all right? And how does it affect us in terms of how we look at ourselves and how others view us? Because I don't give white people that much credit. I see them slipping too bad, man. Because they, they catching hell right now, man. They done mm-hmm. fucked up so bad, man. The Chinese done, done bought this motherfucker out. Listen, real. listen, listen. It doesn't matter what the Chinese have done. <laughs> it don't matter what you think of yourself. There's a wickedly brilliant uh, uh, lesion of motherfucking Caucasian people that's on top of all this shit. And it don't matter what kind of debt they got out of, that, no matter what kind of debt they in, they gonna gangster their way out that shit. If that was true, Corey, we wouldn't be sitting in this studio right now and you would be dead and so would I. Why you say that? Because if white people was all of that, they man, they can't stand you. So you saying, Corey, by saying... They can't saying, stand you, but they can't stop you either. But you you saying there is no Leader. evil cabal of I don't, I, white I, I elitists. Say, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they're not invincible. They're not bulletproof. Okay. Oh, of course not. They're, they're people, too. Well, everybody knows that, but what I'm saying no, is... No, everybody don't. Man, niggas are scared of white folks. I know some brothers, man, that will blow all our heads off for stepping on his toe. A white man will come... Cut his cable off, cut his lights off, and everything. Won't he say a word. Bow his head. Won't say a fucking word. Yeah, I, I feel you on that, but I'm just saying, it's like you ask why people are still alive, it's because you're not a threat. If you was a threat, then they'll come get you. Well, what makes you a threat? I think that's... You get to a certain level, I, I, I can respect what you're saying. At this level, it's not enough rumble about it. We're not having a, enough impact. But when you get to a certain level, you're right. But you know what balances when, when, that out? When you get to a certain level. You know why Louis Farrakhan's still alive? And they've been one of them dead a long time. They thought that cancer got him. They thought all the other shit, but he keep coming back. The real reason they don't go after Louis Farrakhan is they can't stop killing him. Because the faith that he's a part of says it's an eye for an eye. If they kill you know. Louis Farrakhan, they're going to set... A whole nation. You saying yeah, of there's going to be retaliation? Loose. Yeah. I can I can I can feel you on that. I'm just saying, but um, you know what they did to um, extinguish what he was doing in the past is all their predictable, predictable tactics. When they had the Million Man March, the first thing they did on television was said, "Well, it wasn't a million. Well, actually, it was close to two million people there." Mm. It's what they do. They know how. They're not going to do nothing to like ruffle the feathers of the world in a way where they like, okay, it'll be retaliation like this. You're right. But what I'm saying is, um, bottom line, the reason you are still alive, the reason people aren't after you is because you're not a threat. And when you are a threat, they isolate you from yours, which they have the power to do. So, Because most don't understand how easy it is to isolate you from your followers because most people don't want no trouble. They just want to live their life. You know what I'm saying? So if you become one who speaks up and then they isolate you away from the rest of them, most people just going to be like, well, they got him. So recently in the news, they said As- Asada Shakur was a threat. And to speak to Corey's well, they was point, calling her a terrorist? Yeah. Yeah. And she's still on America's Most Wanted list. For what? What did she supposedly Th- do? That's, that's the real question. What did she do? And how is she a threat and you would think having a black man as a president of the United States that at least he would investigate or do something. Maybe that's the expectation, but I don't have that expectation. I think anyone who is anti-government is a, th- is a threat to that society, is a threat to that government. I mean, I would ask this. What did Osama bin Laden do? What he said he was going to do. What did he say he was going to do? He you said, heard him talk? Yeah. I what heard he tapes. Say? He said you heard that, tapes. Yes, of his voice. I yeah. never heard a tape of his voice talking. Really? He was sending them out in the early early years that they were looking for him. He was sending tapes and videos out damn near every week. We have well, that well, on Lord Authority. Time out. What did he say, Bobby? He said basically. Well, no, uh, not basically. Did you hear him talk? That's yeah, what I'm I asking heard him you. talk. But it's been a while. I can't quote him verbatim. Nobody's heard him talk. And was it? You don't was speak it his language, yeah, right? I was about to say, was it in you Arabic or English? You don't speak his language. You just, you just don't understand. 
They are showing you something. <laughs> you don't know what he said. The deal went bad. His family, the Ben Lines did business with the Bushes, and, and, and they've been doing that shit for, for, for generations, man. This ain't no new shit. He broke the mold. He said, you know what? Y'all don't, he got into the religion. He was into the money at first. And then he actually started getting into the religion. And he used the money that his family had. You talking about Osama bin Laden? Yes, sir. But do you realize what it means when you speak in, like, factual information mm-hmm. or versus opinional information? No. Well, the bin Laden family, you can trace them back to the Bush family, man. That's factual. Oh, you can? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, everybody. It's like... This guy on Solomon Lot get a bad rap, but niggas don't even know him. <laughs> he was they a Saudi, don't know man. nothing about him. They just know that on TV they said he bad and he did so, but niggas don't know him. You need- he was one of the richest non-Caucasian people in the world. Therefore, he was on the hitman list. That's really what I know as a fact. He was one of the, he was one of the richest people in the world, but he wasn't Caucasian. Therefore. <laughs> They got to get him. What Biggie Small CD said? Somebody got to die. <laughs> he had too much money. And he wasn't part of their agenda. He wasn't with what they was with. Hmm. So they found a way to make him the bad guy. But that's how they do. They fatten you up. They, hey, the butchers, hey, hey, Osama, come on over for dinner and all that shit. The problem is you make a, sta- you make a mistake associating with them in any way. Wow. Interesting stuff. I well, mean, have you ever thought about that, Zoe? I have. Do you know? Because I just don't know a lot of people who know what Osama bin Laden was saying on those tapes. They just feel like they know they they heard something that was on TV. The man didn't speak English when he was talking on them tapes. No, he didn't. <laughs> but, Nobody uh, knows what he said. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> It's, television is called the dummy box, ladies and gentlemen. If you watch it and get your information off what you see on TV, then you may be, you know, misled. You know, co- Cookie Monster ain't real. <laughs> He's well, not really eating cookies. If it's really a big bird out there, that thing will fuck you up if it's see you. <laughs> I wish it was a real big bird. That motherfucker will bite your fucking head off. <laughs> That's why people get killed by polar bears. They be like, oh, it's a polar bear. Ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't that TV it, man. is a motherfucker, man. It, that TV it, can real. turn the whole nation against me. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, oh, he bad. He did this. And I ain't never really did but shit. But that's what they do. They but use media <laughs> to yeah. build you up yeah. and then ultimately tear you down. That's well, right. But see, here's that's where it gets right. really interesting because before there was a Corey Holcomb, Richard Pryor, uh, had a television show that they paid him big money for. And they, they said, you can keep them last four episodes because he went in a conscious direction that was brilliantly funny. And they said, oh, oh, no, 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 no. We don't do that. With NBC. And he knew from that point forward that he was glad he came up through the Chitlin circuit because they never could cut him off from enough money to not to have to go and do all that old, you know, wearing dresses and all that kind of shit. Niggas Same thing with Bernie Mac. Money. Same thing with Bernie Mac. It doesn't matter if he got that TV show or not. The people fuck with Bernie Mac. Right. And they do the same with you. You have a, you have enough of an audience that they, they can't starve you out unless they just kill comedy altogether. Well, you know, I feel like I'm coming up in the ranks and I'm going to be me. And, like, when I say shit about Obama, I always say shit that I see. It's my opinion he's cowardly when it comes to speaking up on what he needs to speak up on. But that's what I'm saying. Is it a problem? Like, would it hurt him? He can't get unelected. Would it hurt him to pardon Asada Shakur? He won't uh, He won't even pardon Jack Johnson, and he's been dead. <laughs> oh, God. He won't pardon Jack that Johnson. That motherfucker, will, he will pardon Boy George for wearing that pussy-ass <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> Back in the 80s, goddammit. We got to take a break. Damn. We'll be back. And get 51 these calls. 50 show. Yeah. We're going straight to the callers when we come back. Thanks Appreciate you. Up. Check this motherfucking song out. Yo. Yo. Coca-Cola in hand. I feel refresh, yo. I seen the writing on the walls. No expo. I li- she Yo, into the I, point where I, hey, she running this motherfucker. I'm gonna tell you right now, that was that was a good solid three. 
Yeah, that you was like a good that solid three point five. That was all right. The track was tight. I think the MCs could be a little tighter in terms of their rhymes, but they would they were in pocket to me. That to me that was probably the best record we've played of the Who was that? Who was that? Uh, what was his name? Which one? Uh, uh, Pause is what it was called by Twenty Twenty and Trey. They weren't that bad. How you get at them if you want to listen to their music? We don't yeah. be plugging motherfuckers the right way. We gonna they, get all yeah. this shit down pat. But anyway, get them callers on the line, man. They've been waiting this shit. Hey, this is the fifty one fifty show. Corey Holcomb and the crew. What's up? Who this? Yeah, my one. Yeah. yeah. What's up, brother? Oh, what's going on, Corey Holcomb? Man, we, me and my wife is big fans of your shows. Oh, and, that's what's uh, up. What city y'all uh, live in? We're in Milwaukee, unfortunately. Milwaukee. Originally from Chicago, though. From the crib, shot town. Yeah, we close enough, man. We close enough. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, hey, all y'all, man, y'all got a great show going on. Oh, thank, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, Lonzo, or excuse me, Zoe. Yeah. I remember uh, you had to correct the brother before on that. So, Zoe, uh, add the intellect to it, and Bobby, the old school, that's dope. I appreciate that. We appreciate you for saying that, man. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, but uh, I wanted to touch on the topic real quick. Go ahead. So I'm a I'm a brother, and I'm a very I don't I don't know how to get black that I'm already in. So what happens is I got an Asian wife, and I've been with my wife for almost ten years, and a lot of sisters tend to get mad at seeing a black male that's not, you know, I guess not living a certain type of lifestyle. It's, they feel mad at me in my situation. I never heard you guys discuss that, so I like to hear your. Uh, are you happy? Oh, very happy. Okay. <laughs> very happy, and uh, you know, I, I I don't see no difference. I didn't uh, when I came up. I wanted. I saw. I didn't come up with a father in the household, so I I saw a lot of what my type of women was interested in. The young black women. Nobody went trying to get. Hey, I've been married since I was. 19 years old. My wife was 17. I needed that. If I didn't have, if I hadn't had that in my life, I'd probably be somewhere totally different right now. But because I had a woman that demanded that I be a man, uh, it helped turn, you know, actually mold me into that. Versus I would see my mother take care of niggas, auntie take care of niggas, grandma take care, everybody taking care of niggas. My wife wasn't having that, and I, and I and I saw that, and it and it helped me to grow. Well, I tell you this, man. Most of the time when you are a brother and you have a woman that's not black, um, a lot of sisters going to roll their eyes at you, but them bitches ain't shit for that because they don't know you mm -hmm. and they don't know what you've been through. Now, it's different if they know you and they know how you hooked up with her. Like, you know, sometimes you see a lot of athletes with uh, or, 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 or high, high big money entertainers with Caucasian women that they have nothing in common with. They don't really know that good. It's just this what they chose. This what they want to fuck. That's that's different. But a lot of times, um, you know what I'm saying. Most people who judge you, they don't know your situation. And anybody look at you and judge it off looking. In my opinion, they just an ignorant motherfucker. Mm. You know, I mean, I, 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 shit, I date all kind of women. It wouldn't matter, it, you know, the mm. color or whatever. But if you see a motherfucker with me, that mean that motherfucker got my back. Right, right. Exactly. I ain't got no exactly. knucklehead with me. So, bitch, you can <laughs> roll your eyes if you want to <laughs> and go back to that nigga that make you walk to the car and he walk to his car <laughs> and wave goodbye to your ass, you miserable bitch. That you, you ain't never got to explain yourself to no bitch. Because, I mean, you know, my girl yeah. a half breed. That's what I call her. Uh, a a daddy black and her mama white. And we was at the family reunion picnic, and one of my cousins said, is she white? I said, bitch, why you give a fuck? You got four, <laughs> you got four kids by the streets. <laughs> and you was sitting up, and you know, I ain't been around you, bitch. The boulevard. Just because you my cousin, you think I give a fuck about your motherfucker? <laughs> you asking me about my oh, shit like you boy. judging me. Bitch, mm. die. You see, yeah. you know what's crazy? Volunteer, I volunteer to Paul Bell your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow. 
Hey, you know man, crazy? we appreciate the call, bro. Thanks, brother. Yeah. No doubt, man. Y'all take it easy. You know, you know right. what's crazy about it? You know, and this isn't... There, I'm not speaking in absolutes. Because sometimes you make a statement and they say, oh, that ain't everybody, that ain't everybody. But for a lot of brothers and sisters, it's almost like it's stupid to be territorial over something you don't really appreciate. So you see a brother with, with another race... But you didn't treat him like shit before he got with the other race. You didn't really appreciate him. And then when he got with another race, then you look at him sideways as if he ran out on you in mm. some way. But you didn't appreciate him. But And it goes vice versa. Sometimes women, sisters will go, will, will jump the fence and go on to another race. And, and brothers will look at them sideways. But it's like we're together and we don't really appreciate, appreciate each other. But then we look at each other sideways when we leave each other, you know, for other races. So when I see black women with white guys, it does not piss me off because I know most of them bitches will fuck anyway if you got that paper. <laughs> wow. That's how I look at most women. Mm. If you got that money, you can fuck that bitch. That's wow. just, I, and that might be wrong. But bought and paid for. But that's another reason God ain't made me rich. <laughs> because I will buy your bitch just to get under your skin. I'm that type of motherfucker. Just to show you. Oh, that's your girl, huh? Watch this. It's bald bay for it. Right. <laughs> bitch ain't never had no dress for motherfucking uh, uh, de woo Yeah, wow. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, they emotional. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and women who look at black men who with a white bitch, that white bitch, you don't know what that bitch doing for him mm, wow so you sitting here looking at him crazy this motherfucker this bitch probably putting in real work with him mm, mm. but if she not you still don't know them so what that's the fuck true you talk about yeah Ooh, we I, got get, I get the shame that's really really what it is people yeah. are shame wow and they want to blow it off on you like mm. you did something wrong they just wow. shame i had a uh, partner man um i was the best man in this wedding this was over 30 years ago and uh he had had a bad experience with a sister. He was a brother from Detroit, man. And um, he moved to Denver. He caught a, a bad relationship with a sister. said, man, I ain't messing with another black woman as long as I live. And um, he didn't even tell me he was engaged to a white woman until I got to the airport, man. I was his best man. I didn't know his, his next wife was going to be a white woman. Man, uh, her father refused to come to the wedding. I mean, it was the biggest mess you ever want to see. Yeah. And I said, man, this is what you get when you take – people and start categorizing them. You know, I ain't gonna mess with another sister. Man, you married into a clan family. Wow. Okay. And it didn't work out very well either. It ain't for me to say what I'd never mess with. Because I'm gonna mess with what mess with me. That's the only thing that really matters, man. My homeboy, this shit was so funny when he did this shit. I mean, I couldn't do that but laugh because we, you know, this was a while ago. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We sitting up here, we talking to these girls, right? It was me, my homeboy Sam, and this other nigga, <laughs> this shit was so funny. He wasn't. He was just standing off to the side saying shit. It was some black girls we was talking to, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we was like, hey, man. Hey, man, old girl speaking to you. You ain't saying shit to her. He said, I don't fuck with them ragged ass black bitches no more, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just started laughing like, damn, this motherfucker is... He been yeah. hurt though. He been I mean, burned. real bad. He yeah. been wow. burned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. say I ain't, I ain't never had nothing but black women, but I don't fuck with them no more. Wow. I'm like, wow. That's, that's every every black woman ain't bad, man. It's just it's you not just bad. bad luck. And it's just they can follow you <laughs> yeah, man, when you make that kind of decision. The hoes you man. fuck with ain't got you back. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Who we got? That's man? real got as hell. hell. <laughs> Who we got? Who's on the line? Damn. The, the hoes you fuck with ain't got your back. Ain't got your back, man. Hello. Yeah. Yo. All right, I got you. Hold on. He turned All right, hello? Around. What's All up, right. brother? Yeah. All right, I wanted to talk about um, Obama and shit. I, you could fill me in on the topic because I wasn't paying attention right now. But um, I'm a real nigga, man. But look, I'm going to put it to you like this. I voted. I, I would have. I didn't vote, but I would have voted for Mitt Romney. Real talk. Because. That nigga cheated on his taxes. He was grabbing pussy up in up in his offices and shit. He didn't give a fuck what niggas was talking about. If I think all these presidents is liars, so if a nigga's gonna fucking lie to me, I'd rather you be real with your shit and come real. So that's what I would have did. You feel me? 
No, not really, but I'm trying to work with you, bro. Well, I tell you this, that dude Romney, they asked him about his taxes, him and his bitch say, that ain't your no motherfucking business about our motherfucking shit. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. But um, what are we talking about right now? Are we, what you was talking about. Well, That's we, what we wanted we, to talk about. Okay. We touched on Obama and we touched on a couple of other things. Like, have you ever asked, do you have a, do you have a lady in your life? Um, I got a couple. All right. Have you ever asked a girl, how many dudes you fucked before me? Nah, I don't ask that silly shit, man. I don't give a, I don't give a fuck who you fuck. If you fucking with me, I'm fucking with you. That's it. Point blank. There it is. That's what's up? Sound like a confident brother, man. Thanks Appreciate the call, call man. man. Hey, 5150 show. Who this on the line? What's happening? Y'all, this Terry out here in Dallas, man. All what's right. What's up, up Dallas? Team? Dig that. Hey, all right, I'm going to take it back to last week on y'all, man. Uh, I remember Zoe saying, uh, if a bra, if a bra got you holding your legs up in there while she chewing on your ass, <laughs> right. and, uh, you know what I mean, that's some fruity shit. But see, I got a freak bra. Now, what if the bra grabbed the back of your motherfucking thigh and throw your shit up in the air? Then what that do? What that got you looking like? Hold on, slow it down. Hold on, hold on. You said Whoa. a woman grab a man's thigh and uh, bro, I got a freak bra. The one of them chicks that you know you got to shave up when she come through. She one of them bras get the slobbering at the mouth. She know she giving up some head. That kind of chick. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, mm. yeah, say you got a bra like that and she grabbed the back of your thigh and push your shit up in the air. Now how fruity is that? Cause I looked up and saw my toes stretched out, nigga, like I had my hand wide open, and I was like, "Wait, he's man, getting his diaper changed." Right <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> hey, 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 nigga, that bitch tougher than you. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your push legs over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you, man. I'm fucking with you. No, thanks, thanks for the call, man. man that was a good one, man. Yeah, yeah. Damn, Bring, Bring your push. Soft fans over here. Turn that monkey around. Oh my God. <laughs> this nigga got the monkey. <laughs> the nigga got the monkey. <laughs> oh shit. It's finger fucking wise. He's sucking his dick. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that Man. gay if a girl stick a finger in your ass while she's sucking your dick? <laughs> she finger banging him. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> that ain't in the playbook right there. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what we got, Sonny? Damn, this <laughs> nigga's dating Sydney Star. This is the 5150 <laughs> lying ass show. Yeah. Motherfucker, no, they didn't have their butt plug before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a call on the line. Got a call on the line. We're running out of hey, time. Hey, what up? This cool, yeah. man. 5150, who this? Hey, this is Nate in Baltimore. What's hey, up? Hey, what's up, Mimo? What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to talk on something that y'all, y'all brought up earlier about, you know, the government and everything. Yeah, yeah. And basically, the government got that that get down or lay down mentality. You yeah. know, if you don't get down with them, or you represent, I mean, or you're a threat to their overall agenda, you got to go. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's why. That's, that's what, what it is. That's what happened to Osama bin Laden. Yeah. If that's true, then what the fuck are we gonna do with the rest of our lives? Serve. That's the plan. Okay. All right. One day the shit gonna blow up, man. It's going to happen one day. One day it's just enough is enough, and motherfuckers going to, the shit going to hit the fan. That's what's up. Okay, man. We're going to try to get through the rest of this call, man. We appreciate the call there, B-Mo. Hey, this is the 5150 show. This Corey. Who did? Larry from motherfucking L.A., man. What's up with it? La what up, Lazy, man? what up? <laughs> hey, hey, I want to I wanna try to run through these streets because I'm going to quote uh, Fred Hampton Jr. and Sr. Fred Hampton uh, Jr. Got killed in Chicago. He said something. He said Obama is the coldest drug to hit the black community since the crack. Now, let that wow. marinate for a second. Okay. Uh, okay. Fred, Fred Hampton Sr., he said this. Look, if you're not willing to commit to the struggle, which is, you know, to for the investment of black people, if you want to live a little longer, you already did. You gotta, we got to come mm. down to this, man. When that day and time come, we ready to get serious, man. We got to be willing to sacrifice, man. And unfortunately, it may be we may have to pay with our life. Mm. With wow. What happened with Brother Malcolm and Martin that stirred a lot of people. Then integration came, and then another gang came. They go along and get along, so they make they, they money. So if some people... 
I and Bobby, you touched on, I forget how you said it, it was something about the proper goose or the... Yeah, you get a propaganda to the proper goose. Right. It's, it's, some people don't some people don't have that, that warrior spirit. You see what I'm saying? And until we get back to that, it's always going to be the it's always going to be the issue. That's that's what separated uh, Osama bin Laden because not only was he was willing to be a freedom fighter, but he had the money behind it. Here it is. We we working on a, a shoestring budget, so it's like this. If I propose, like, hey, brother, you gonna sign up for the cause? You gonna look at it like, okay, how much I'm getting paid for it? Right. So once they allowed us to make money, you know, our defense. We let our defense down. We kind of got relaxed. Yeah, he got complacent. I, I want to do people understand what he just said. He yeah. basically said Obama had enough paper and he had that freedom fighter spirit. That's why he became an enemy. And that's why on TV they show him shooting a gun and all that mm. shit and make him look like a villain. Mm. Yeah. Well, the revolution will not be televised. Tell you hey that. man, we appreciate that call, LA. Larry dropped that knowledge yeah, on me. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Hey, 5150 show. You on this, Corey. Who did? Hey, what's up, Corey, man? It's uh, Mike from DC, man. What's up? Hey, man, what's up? Ain't nothing much, man. What's up, Zoe? What's up, Bob? What up, hey, man? brother? What's going on? Hey, man, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just catching on, y'all. What's the uh, topic for tonight, man? What y'all talking about? Oh um, man, we, we talk about um, if a girl suck your dick, will you let her put your put a thing in your ass? Oh man, <laughs> shit! Uh, let me see a girl suck my dick. Oh man, hey man, it had to be the most manly way. I ain't gonna be having my feet up in the head. Though. It has to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I don't think you heard the rest of the the, uh, the proposition. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, run that bike one more time. Yeah, Corey. might wanna just might wanna set it up again. <laughs> if a girl is sucking your dick. <laughs> Real good, slobbing all over that motherfucker, <laughs> and she try to slide that finger in that ass. Oh, I thought you said can she oh, can oh, she nah, finger bang you? Uh, back slap though, nah, hell nah, oh nah. I don't think we'll get a man who will admit that no. they've been violated. <laughs> they've been no, finger they banged. Yeah, oh hell nah, no, man. Oh, I'm a, I had to tell you so, Corey. If I had something happen to me, man, this damn. Man, I done paid for some pussy over the weekend, man. I was mad, man. This girl done photoshopped her pussy, man. Mm. What you mean? That girl charged me $100, and I had to pay $40 in tolls. The bitch stayed in Baltimore. I had to pay tolls for the tunnel. Oh, that's fucked up, man. Hold on. But did you, <laughs> did you get a chance to bust? Uh, I fucked the girl. I said, hey, shit, it's just I'm out here. I might as well fuck it. Mm. Damn. Hey, I done bought pussy before and didn't bust. Ain't lying, man. Pussy ain't look like I said. Well, I got that. Oh, oh, okay, now nah, like so, so the pussy had a headshot. Is <laughs> what is it she? Wasn't the, when you looked at her pussy, you'd be like, "This ain't the pussy that was in the picture, bitch." <laughs> Hell no, nah, that bitch should have got arrested. This bitch took a picture of her daughter pussy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said, man, man. Yeah, I, said, I had I had to pay a hundred. I had to pay a hundred dollars to fuck her, and I had to pay twenty dollars to get. Do the tunnel and twenty dollars to get back. Oh, man, pussy, pussy profile pic. I had a bitch with yeah, man. Her pussy hey, had grew high. Man, I said rest that bitch, man. Damn. All right, we bitch, appreciate that call, yeah, my brother. Right, yeah. man. This bitch, her pussy had grew high, and her C-section <laughs> scar was. Uh, <laughs> You know, the, she had pussy hair where the sky was. And I was like, damn, bitch, yo, your pussy hair grow by your belly button, bitch. What the fuck? How the fuck your pussy got so much hair? It was a, around the stomach. It was higher than I ever seen it. Had an Afro lawn. Right. Like, <laughs> oh, man, we got about seven more minutes, man. We we'll check deeper. your calls, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Go deep, pussy. Is that somebody on the line? Hey, this this Corey on. Oh. Hey, this is fifty one fifty show. What up? Who this? Hello. Hello. Oh, hey. Um, I'm Chris from Pittsburgh. What up? Okay. Hey, uh, I've been listening to the show. I found it on YouTube. Real interesting show. I appreciate that there are still uh, men who aren't afraid to be men. And uh, you know, I'm a young cat, only twenty one. So um, it's cool to see. Uh, you guys, you know, chop it up, real talk, and uh, I kind of use you guys as an example uh, mm. on how to carry myself as well. That's what we strive wow, for, man. man. Appreciate that, man. Really, we do, are man. striving for that, man. We want people to see I, what we do and see we ain't scared. Mm. True, true. That. Thank um, you, brother. Uh, going back to the, what Corey said at the beginning of the show, talking about uh, profile and whatnot. Uh, at the school that I go to, 
um, the building, the one building that I have to go into, that there's a video camera and an ID swipe that you have to swipe in, and there's a white bitch that sits in an office right uh, behind the door that you go in there. Now, she sees everyone that comes in there, and you have to have an ID swipe to get in there. And the, my first semester when I went there, the first week when I had to go to this class, every single day she would ask me, do you go here? Yeah, after the bitch that seen you and know you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 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 you know. And the only way you can get in there, it's not like it's just open for the public. You have to swipe in to get in. Right. She know you. She, But she got a job to do. And part of her job is to fuck with you. <laughs> That's what it is. Don't ever make them niggas feel comfortable. Next time she do that <laughs> shit, uh, remind her what she had on yesterday and how disappointed you was in that selection. <laughs> <laughs> then that bitch gonna be too embarrassed to say something to you. Wow. Thanks for the call, man. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you, it. youngster. Man, I know what he's going through. You go into the damn school, somebody fucking with you. Yeah. hate to see you there. Yeah. We gonna get this other call. Hey, yeah. what up? This is the 5150 show. Who this? Hello? You got Executioner. Hello, next caller. Hey, it's Asian Brutus. What's poppin'? What it do, man? Chillin', chillin'. See, ho, man, you know, I'm a big fan of yours, man. I had a question I want to ask you for a while, man. I know it's probably off subject. Go ahead. But, all right, man, you know, I, I hear you always talking, and this is going to be real left field, because I, I know it's real far from the subject probably, man, but uh, I know you always talk about how, and I agree, man, you talk about how the evil world, the evil powers of this world is conducted by the evil white man, correct? No. But go ahead, don't make no, your No, 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 he asked me, and I just say, I feel like they have a lot to do with the chaos. Thank you. Okay, now, now, I agree. Now, I I, over, I remember one time I heard you said that um, you, you kind of was into religion. You know, you still you still had a good faith in, you know, you wasn't sure to turn your life over to God, but it's kind of like, it, I, I'm just curious, man, how can you believe what um, anything about what they say about God, <laughs> what these people wrote, because that's what they wrote. This is their history. I know it's so left field, man, but I had to ask you this, man. I don't get online to, to talk to you, bitch, but so I just kind of wanted to see what your point of view on that was. I get what you're saying. I don't claim a religion right now. If yeah, I ever, no, I if, if I ever was to claim a religion, it would probably be Islam. Hmm. Yeah, I like the discipline with Islam. You can't hmm. do what the fuck. It ain't like this religion over here, like Christianity, where you do what the fuck you want to do and ask for forgiveness, <laughs> and God will forgive you. Yeah. That's a that's a very convenient religion. Hmm. That's real. I studied anything, this. Anything convenient you're supposed to. I say you're supposed to get out your comfort zone. You know, not be comfortable. And it's supposed to be able to make you use your mind, but yeah, I just had to. I just had to add you. See, oh, I'm, I don't want to go ahead and take your show left field because I know you. Zoe you was know, gonna say something about it. What you was gonna say, Zoe? Well, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism are all, you know, cousin religions. They're all related. You know, yeah. Abraham connects them all. So, you know. I studied Islam for 12 years, and it's a beautiful religion. It's a disciplined religion. And you get some of the same messages out of Islam uh, that you get out of Christianity. It's just that whenever you deal with these fanatics, politics is more important than the message in the book, in the culture, in the works. So m my question to you, young brother, is if you're studying religion, you should be studying it from a pers from an objective perspective, not a perspective of a follower. You should try to get the message in it. Because so often, especially in the African-American community, because we don't have culture, what we want to do is associate with a culture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm a Christian. My grandmama was Christian. And then they don't really get the true meaning behind the belief system. Oh no, so. you know, you know, I trust me, man. I grew up Christian, and I, 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 um, I just say I woke up after you know my own proper research. But you know, you're right. They're all, you know, I think it's the same hand, pretty much. It was all created by men. I remember once you said this, though. By the way, uh, much respect to you, Zoe and Bobby Glanton. Um, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but yeah, um, you said whoever writes history, whoever had the control last, you said rewrite history. Yeah, whoever I, wins the war gets to rewrite yeah, history. Well, and, yeah. I, and I, I just think that everything that we're thinking about, what people think about God, and I, I you know, I just think piecing it up from what CEO said, um, anything people piece up about God, how the hell are they going to know? Because they're going by what these people, these people, people created, uh, wrote. That we're reading their history. Or, or, so, or maybe they just using something to oppress people. Maybe it ain't evil. Maybe they just using it 
in a, in, in an evil way. Trick Daddy said, uh, "Y'all want to remix the Bible?" <laughs> That's exactly what they did. You know what I mean? So. Well, we yeah, thank man. you. We we thank you for the call, brother. We got to move quickly. Sorry about that, but we got to move That's, quickly. Might as well make that the last call of the day because we only got how much time we got? Two, Two minutes. minutes. We're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to take first dibs. Uh, I got a show coming on tomorrow night, 530. Yeah. The Man Mindset. Uh, give us a shout and check it out. Where can they watch it? Right here. WR, uh, WWRMC on air. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Him and him and Steve, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to let Columbus, could. Ohio know I will be there Friday through Saturday at y'all Funny Bone Comedy Club in Columbus, Ohio. I know y'all going to come see me. I guarantee you I'm going to act a motherfucking fool. Uh, I might be blackballed. Won't be able to come back. But no, they can't I'm gonna stop I'm going to do my motherfucking thing. <laughs> there you go. What days are those now again? Friday through Sunday. Friday through Sunday. Columbus, Ohio. Man, y'all and, know. And also, uh, the Zo What Morning Show, which airs Tuesday mornings here on this network, is on YouTube right now. You can go to YouTube, search RMC on air, and you'll find... Uh, that our video is the featured video. Check out the show. We did a show today called The Vag Facts, uh, where we talked about, you know, all of the questions about your woman and her vaginal history. And also, go get a Zoe What t-shirt. Uh, if you want to order a t-shirt, ZoeWhatOrders at gmail.com. That's Z-O-What-Orders at gmail.com. Get at me. You, you talked about the Blue Owl Piss Dispensary on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to wrap it up. 5150 show. Next week, we have a very serious show. Um, it's about um, <laughs> it's about abortions and shit, so uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it there. Uh, y'all tune in next week. 5150, we out. Yeah. All right. All I'm puffing on is high-grade weed. <laughs>